You hear that? There are FM saves out there that need saving. Let's go! We found them. First save is from Wilbra. Hi, Will. Hello. Going by Wildebeest99, managing Salford. Good day, Mr. Shannon. I love a proper greeting. I can't believe we're missing out on that with most of these. This is my first ever FM save. I didn't know what FM was, and I came across your videos during quarantine. This is awesome. After binge watching tons of videos, and because I finally realized that FM is free with Game Pass, I decided to try it out. I started this save about a month into the FM23 life cycle and got promoted as we were expected to in my first season. But despite signing what I thought at the time were some good free agents, including Marcelo and Zlat, what the hell is going on here? I got relegated back to League 2 by a goal. I immediately got promoted back to League 1 the following season. After that, I decided to give up on the save due to a fear of failing again. Since then, I have had mild success with some easier saves. I have decided to port this one into FM24, and I'll take any advice you have. Well, I, I, I appreciate the transparent honesty here, that you basically got promoted back up again, and you were just afraid to keep playing. I've been there. Yeah, pretty much. How did you get Zlatan to play in League 1? by the way. Like I said, that I didn't even know the game existed and this is my first save. And I didn't even realize at the time that that was like that crazy. They didn't even play that well and were injured half the year for both of them. Okay, we'll start with the tactic. And first of all, hell yeah, with the 4-4-2. Are you leaning into the meme of lower league England here? Yeah, a little bit. And also it's kind of like, I don't, I'm not comfortable with anything else. And I, I kind of wanted to make it so that way I couldn't blame the tactic for my problems. So I wanted to make it as simple as I could be so I could focus on other stuff. Mostly. A yeah, 4 4 2 isn't even the most basic. I would say a 4 3 3 is probably the most basic. There are some complex right. things about making a 4 4 2 work in the modern game. Did you change the team at all the first time you got promoted? Uh, like w the team that I played when I played, uh, that I was, when I was relegated that second season? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I think I partially, uh, one of the biggest things now that I thought back about it was I think I changed my tactic a little too often when I was losing because I just didn't know what else to do. Yeah, what did you, what did you change it to? I was playing a 4 2 3 1. If I'm just going for a redesign here, do you have a goalkeeper? Yeah, I was going to mention that. So, I, going on the theme of trying to sign old players that are, you know, popular or famous or whatever you want to say, I had Romero in goal. And I thought, because this happened with Zlatan, I thought the contract clause overrid the thing, the little retiring thing, because it did with Zlatan when I signed him. It said he was going to retire two months before his contract ended, but he stayed. So I thought Romero would finish his contract but he just retired in the middle of the season and I kind of was stupid and didn't realize. And so I'm just out of a goalkeeper and I haven't played a game since that happened because I'm like too scared to even try. All right, well, guess what? James Montgomery is your new goalkeeper. So come down to the, <laughs> come down to the development squad, go get James <laughs> Montgomery, stick his butt in there. He's not the best, but he's also, and you're lucky in this, He's not terrible. And what right. you need to do, we'll just come to player search and we'll just look for people whose contracts are expired, who play goalkeeper. That's 28 players that would be interested in playing for you. I would just go ahead and send a trial on like all of these guys. At very least, you'll get a better backup than currently this guy who is 17 and like there's nothing about this guy that is good it, besides the fact that he has 15 reflexes but he might as well be an f1 driver at that point because he can't do anything else but one of these guys if they happen to be good you could sign them and they could start playing right away i did have some questions about scouting or at yeah, least yeah. one 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 big question that i've always wondered in the player players in range thing and i was wondering if that's actually all the players i see or if there's actually like a benefit to me like having recruitment focuses and having my scouts go out and find people or if i can see everyone i need to see in that players in range screen so while the players in range is very very helpful they're not the only people that exist they're just the people that because of well, i'll show you right here scouting coverage there's your world knowledge. They're right. just the oh, they're just the people that you are aware of existing, right? So that's eight thousand players. Let's go to add remove leagues. There's thirty seven thousand players in the database. I was also having some issues with loaning players in because I just couldn't like they're not all the players I'm trying to load in like all the under twenty one players I'm trying to get free loans on I are are like out of my scouting range. And so I find myself either like spending the money to go scouting them and then they end up not being good enough and I'm wasting my money or I'm like finding a player that I can see par partial stats on and they're partially good enough and I just kind of take a blind shot in the dark. 
I'm not sure if that's how, just how it goes or if I'm missing something there. I'm going to be straight up with you. You have more money, and you could probably up your scouting game right now. Your transfer budget is huge, uh, and I don't think you're using it. So if you moved that into your scouting budget, you could get an entire world package right now. Right. Look at how many players are in your player search now. Holy, yeah, okay. Let's just look at the difference that that just made. So let's go expired contracts goalkeepers there are now 730 of them there used to be 28 so your goal your goalkeepers are are out there they're out there to be found i i did have one question about the partial oh, yeah. like when the stats are like partially shown like that yeah. if it's in a color I, the range is like 9 to 14 but it's all white does that mean it's gonna be in that white color like when i see the stat or it, it still could be like one of the higher ups yeah. as far as i as far as i know there's no trick to that what i believe is the case is that the color is pulled from the lowest number of the range if there was a trick to that if there is a trick to that i would love to know it but i don't think there is cool. it is entirely random too i know a lot of people that will look at it and be like well if it's just the average of 13 to 20 it'll be good it's like it, it is very possible that's 13. the range is completely random got it i feel like i've armed you with a lot of knowledge to go out and take this seize this i'm ready well thank you and good luck getting promoted next we have the nuka managing karlsruhr sc they wrote my buddy and i started a network save at the end of fm23 that we ported over to fm24 i honestly didn't know you could do that until right now we took over rival sides in the second tier of germany karlsruhe for me and kaiser slaughter for him first season went well we both got promoted second season went well for me as i snuck into the europa league now we're in season three and we're both struggling me in particular as our success last season raised the expectations of the board who are now mad i'm struggling with relegation i don't know if it's bad tactics or if my team just need to be improved but any help would be greatly appreciated to help us avoid relic oh no it's relegation nukem what happened i wish i could tell you it's it's nuke bomb if that works too <laughs> i can read for sure <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. I probably shouldn't have known it was Nuke Bomb given the image that you use on Discord. That would have been that would have been that would have been a solid clue. Honestly, part of me wants to say it's luck. I don't know. I thought it might be fixture congestion and the XG table makes it seem like we perform an okay, but just can't get points to save our lives. So the porting of the network game seems to have broken the Bundesliga to begin with. Maybe that's your issue because you're in 18th and 19th, which should be impossible in the Bundesliga because there's only 18 teams in the league, but still. This is about survival, not about logic. Well, the problem is there's very little time left to turn this around. So screw ta uh, like transfers and squad building. Your club atmosphere and your team cohesion is good. This is all about getting the most out of your players for the last two mat like few matches so that you don't end up in the relegation zone. Uh, now, how close are you? It's C+. Plus. It's not that bad. Yeah, I, I think it, right now I'm in the relegation playoff. I feel like if I actually got actually relegated, I'd probably get fired. So that's kind of, we're kind of on the cusp there. So let's look around at the team. They're not great. I mean, 12, 13, 12, Holy Trinity, and a guy that I believe is one of your starting strikers, that's tough. I tried to strengthen my team well enough to, you know, be mid-table or so. Some of these guys I'm looking at that you signed right here, like the left back, Miguel Gutierrez, that was a good deal. Bola, Hack, Matson, Obafemi, those guys are all first team players. Uh, using free transfers to build your team when you're at this stage is a good move. The use of the loans is good. Picking up Warren Zaire Emery is good. So so this is all going to come down to tactics. You're in the results end of the season. And so what I would recommend in this situation is finding a way to make this tactic more defensive. I am all for trying to shrink the field against teams that are better than you, but you're not doing that, right? You're sitting in a mid block. If you want to play like this and you want to shrink the field and you want to basically play Russian roulette with like, you know, with Bayern Munich, you can do that. But managing a team that has mid-talent is about having multiple options. When you're playing your friend who's in the relegation zone, you should go for it. Yeah, I think it's kind of been like a tactic where it doesn't do enough to pressure bad teams and it doesn't do enough to either roll the dice or to play conservatively against good teams. So we're kind of stuck in the middle. So what's the thinking uh, here with the way you've done your in-transition stuff? Uh, I... I I don't know. <laughs> That's what okay, it's been. <laughs> fair enough. What, well, what do you want? What do you want to do? And I'll help you get there. What do you want your team to do here? The idea is take it back and then like play quickly, like especially with the shorter passing, like play some short, quick passing, get up the field. That's kind of the the general idea. I'm not a tactical expert though, too. That's part of hey, the reason. No, you're, you, you, you've gone for it, and this this shape is one that can win a ton of games. So you want to you want to quick uh, play quick short passes. 
rollout. A rollout is doesn't mean the goalkeeper's gonna roll it out every time. It's just the best way to guarantee they're gonna play it short. Aim for your back line, unless you've got a halfback or an anchor that's dropping in between your center backs. This is going to target your goalkeeper to get the ball out and allow you to play out from the back. Maybe if you don't like uh, your center backs, you can go just fullbacks. Uh, I, I know your fullbacks are good, so you're not gonna wanna just go center backs. And then you wanna distribute quickly as well if you want to really take advantage of the counter. This counter press thing is something you'll want to turn on if you want to get more aggressive. I would definitely recommend, particularly if you feel like you're giving up space here, like you're getting kind of deep balls from this area of your formation where people are sitting in this spot and then hitting like balls that are get that are getting in behind, like in behind your team anyways. I would recommend trying to at least raise this a little bit uh, and then put some more pressure on the opposition. Yeah, makes, that makes sense, definitely. And then create a third tactic that is a more defensive version of this. Maybe it's just a, I, I, I hate to be basic, right? But just like a nice, sensible kind of 4-3-3 three, three that looks a little bit more like this instead of what you uh, what you had going on. And then, you know, maybe it has a lower tempo, some time wasting, and then you can go with your standard block, but I would recommend maybe a drop off more. That allows, that allows you to try and take away the space that they can play in behind once they break through the front part of your defense. Yeah, I haven't really messed with those multiple tactics, but if we're trying to survive, it's probably smart. But you are, you're in the gold medal round of the season and it's no longer about the system. It's like individual matchups and being able to give it to bad teams and not get flattened by good teams. <laughs> that, that should be your thought process. All right, that's good. Do you want to take a look at the XG table? Because even as bad as it is for us, it's even worse. It's a million times worse for my friend. I love you are a true student of the game because you're like, look, I know all the, the things you're saying. Yeah, that's fair. But what you need to know is how much I'm getting screwed. So you're ninth. And he's seven. So you actually, you guys, you guys both have the two worst point differentials on the XG table. Yeah. I, mean, I had never seen numbers that in the negative on the next sheet table before this season. <laughs> so your goalkeeper is in the negative for XG prevented, which is obviously below a large collection of uh, of goalkeepers that are in the league. So maybe that's something you should look on improving uh, in the off season. Yeah, your goalkeeper is bad. He's a bad shot stopper specifically. Yeah, fair enough. That's a position I've been thinking about. Yes, you're getting screwed. Yes, if you probably kept doing what you've been doing with your good locker room atmosphere, you'd be able to get out of the relegation playoff area. But I, I think that being so married to playing one tactical style, no matter what, can put you in danger, particularly when the match is getting out of control for you. You don't really have anything to turn to. Yeah, and our remaining schedule is not the easiest. We have Leverkusen, Dortmund, Frankfurt, even mines is decent in this save, I think. So it's a great time to start training that a bit more defensive tactic. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. You got anything else you want me to look at? Uh, I don't think so. I have staff, so. <laughs> Yay! Finally, somebody has staff! I think that's about it. Thank you. Of course. And thank you for putting your save in and nuke bomb. Good luck. Next, we have Mike Zors, who's managing FC Eindhoven. Hi, Mike. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> Surprise. And Mike wrote, after winning the first division in the first season, securing promotion, I ended in the European spots in the era de Vizy. After a first year of Europa League, ending in a, what's a minor? Um, Just out of the, out of the playoffs. Okay. Uh, we kept on going with decent performances, including winning the Conference League last season. Oh, that's amazing. The current season in the Europa League, we just missed out on direct placement and reached the playoffs. We got Spurs, so we're probably ending up the Europe, uh, ending the European campaign this year. The problem is, though, the league. We have mixed results, and it kind of looks like every single team in the league now knows how to play against us. The main goal is to compete for Champions League spots to catch up financially with the big three, PSV, Feyenoord, and Ajax. Now, this is not the first time that I have tried to... Uh, I've been given a save in the Eredivisie because you what you're trying to do is obviously quite difficult, Mike. Well, I've been playing since since uh, FM 08, so I've been playing a lot, looking at the results. There's like a lot of wins, and then there's a few losses again, and then it's 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 all up and down. Okay, so I filtered your schedule so that we can just see the era of Izzy results. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly, like, this run is brutal, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but what immediately jumped out to me is having a run like this, where yeah. all four of these teams, if you want to obviously achieve your goal, you probably have to win like three out of four of these matches. Like, what do you think is the main problem with the way that your team is playing? I think the main problem is 
the defense, even though I bought a better player in the summer uh, to strengthen that, but it doesn't seem to actually work. Mike, I'm, I'm scared, Mike. As I have, I've now sorted by goals allowed. You have the third most goals allowed in the league. <laughs> so I, the, the, I, I would say we've diagnosed the problem pretty clearly, but yeah. <laughs> I'm hesitant to blame the defense here because it could be that the defense is being put in a super tough spot, and they are. This is very, very aggressive. I, a lot of times I feel like when I'm saving saves, I need to sit down and be like, yo, you got to make this tactic a little more aggressive when teams are playing against teams that they're afraid of. Yeah. I don't think you're capable of being afraid of a team. If you're if you're coming out and you're playing Tottenham or whatever in the Europa League and you're wheeling you're wheeling this out. I mean, let, let's go ahead and do like a direct player comparison, right? Like if you're playing against Tottenham, right? Your winger is Yeah, uh, this is not a starter though because uh, okay. I had a um a match before this because it was um, in between the games of Tottenham. Okay, this guy's a star player striker for you. That's right? my striker, yeah. All right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. Did you win the conference league with this guy? Yes. That's crazy, <laughs> Mike. That is insane. Yeah, I mean, he's not he's not scoring a lot of goals, but he's like he's like very inconsistent. Yeah, well, I, I look, I'm gonna be. He's not inconsistent. He's bad. This guy is. <laughs> he is bad. I mean, your your staff is telling you he's a decent second division player. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with him. So I initially looking at this thought the issue might be that you're staying in a really aggressive tactic too much. I, I actually think that the main issue your team has, because I don't care if you're tactical Jesus, you're not going to close the gap between your striker, right, and, and Najee Univar. And I'm aware that you're, you're, you're probably sitting there in the back of your mind like, well, I need money to make that happen. Mm -hmm. You're right. Uh, but you have outperformed your talent. You won a European Cup with Eindhoven. I would consider that an incredibly impressive uh, result. I think it would be a very wise choice to have a couple more options, but your main issue is the fact that particularly in certain points, I feel like a problem that literally everybody that has football manager has, and it takes somebody that kind of comes in from the outside to look at it and be like, what are you doing with this person? And that problem mm -hmm. is you just kind of fall in love with players and just assume you can get it done with that player in that spot. If you get 2 million for this guy also, take it and run. I'm looking at his yeah. value. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I think it would be. I'm kind of, kind of, um, wanting in, wanting to sell him. Cause, um, obviously he's only making like 10 goals a season, yeah. which is not enough for a first striker in a mid table, like 15 to 18 should be possible. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm really interested to see how this works. Cause if you, if you're able to up your player acquisition game yeah. to win the conference league, you squeezed orange juice out of a rock basically. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so you should be like, if you, if you had the talent Ajax had, I think you'd be able to win the champions league with your understanding of the game. So yeah. that's what you just have to focus on entirely. Yeah. Cause, cause I, I know how to, how to make deals. Cause, um, last, last summer I sold my goalkeeper for 3 million and then I bought a new one, which is now injured by the way, but it's the, that one. Yeah. I think I bought him for like half a million. That's it. I mean, it's a good pickup. I love yeah. a good reflex goalkeeper. More of that. <laughs> yeah. Also like, uh, love was, uh, Zovranek was also a free transfer. Well, he's, that's, he's, that's he's paying, he's paying for that by getting one and a half million a year. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 still, it, it was a free transfer though. Yeah, no, which is smart because one of those things that always matters in this case is how much value do you have in the squad. Yeah. You do have value in the squad. If you ever saw a world class Brazilian wonder kid out there for sixteen million, you could break the glass and sell somebody to go get the next Neymar or whatever if you want. Yeah, to. there's only one problem left. Oh, okay, what's that? Um, because uh, my captain is uh, Joey Slagers. He's like thirty three, and he's like, um, it's the the last sub. Okay. He's like not capable of, of achieving what he what he should achieve. But there's like no more team leaders in my team. Oh no, you got two other ones. Come on now. Yeah, but but they're both not good enough as well. So <laughs> uh, it's uh, fair enough. I mean, there's there's still there's still development for him. Um, but the other guy, the Gucci, um, he's just not good enough anymore. Okay, well he's open to speaking to other clubs. The problem is that this Rotier guy, who is 26 by the way, so his development's yeah. over. Uh, unless yeah. he's unless he's one of those late bloomer Jamie Vardy types. But Co he's not interested in leaving. But Kochu is at least interested in exploring the possibility of leaving that is as long as that is the case then it's not really an issue and then once you you can only have a max of three team leaders so once a team leader leaves like sleegers contracts running out at the end of the year it creates a vacuum that just pulls people up the okay is it the highly influential is it is it also a max of three or 
Uh, no, that is not maxed at three. So that is, but the fact that you have so many players in the influential player department means that there will be more highly influential players soon. Uh, where the team leaders, you can only have three at a time. So once one of these guys goes, somebody else will be pulled up, basically. Okay, perfect. And hopefully it's the guy that you want. But Sleeger's contract's running out. <laughs> Kushu is fine with leaving. Rodier would be difficult to get to leave. He only won squad players, so I guess it's not that bad. But if you ever can't give that to him, you just kind of lower his expected playing time. And when the team comes to you because they're angry, you just go, I don't think he's good enough anymore. Yeah. That should at least handle most of the problem. I mean, he's, he's, he's a good sub because he can play like everywhere in, in, in front. So. Yeah. Uh, and it's always good to have one of those types of guys. So there might, yeah. not, there might not be much of a point of trying to uh, annoy him, but no, he's, he's he's like a good guy for the first eighteen. Yeah, that makes sense. But also the the Ospina is normally the guy that uh, plays right wing. I uh, got him for, for free yeah, as well. Which, look, all of those players for free are great, and mm -hmm. they're going to allow you to be at the level that you're at. Right, right. Like you can catch Greningen with free signings and loans. You're not going to catch Ajax and PSV with free signings and loans, right? Because they're, you know, they're, they're spending... You're never going to spend how much they're spending unless you play the save for a really long time. But, you know, the value of the players on their team is really high right you yeah uh, this is, i think like the top players like more uh, worth more than my entire squad yeah so this guy <laughs> all the way down here would still be mm -hmm. the most uh, highly valued player on your team and then yeah. when you look at the wages they're spending way more on wage obviously than you're able to uh you're able to spend so mm -hmm. you have to build a core of young players that can develop up to the point that they're able to compete with these teams basically that's it yeah. uh, is there cool. any, anything else you want to Look at. I think I think that that's it. Yeah, I mean, cool. I, I need to be less suicidal in my tactic. <laughs> yes, I uh, le le less uh, insanely aggressive in the tactic, and then yeah. better at getting the kind of high end type players that can help you beat the teams you want to beat. Big off season coming. Yes. Probably. Next, we have Jay Stan, the man managing Kings Lynn Town. Hello, Jay Stan. Hello. How are you, Z? Are we, are we interrupting <laughs> you at work right now? I want to be interrupted, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're focused on football manager. In, in, uh, hopefully, yes. you know, nobody in the hospital is in too much danger that we've stolen you away for 15 minutes or something. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> 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 and you wrote, after three back-to-back -back promotions, I'm stagnating in League One. I have no transfer or payroll budget, and I'm not sure how to improve my team without destroying it. My reputation isn't League One level, so I can't bring in more players, and I'm in debt, so the board won't improve my facilities. I appreciate the brevity in that, by the way. First thing I'm going to look at is the whole team detailed stats thing, just to check out how much of a hole you're in relative to the rest of the league. Oh, yeah. And it, it must, it feels terrible, obviously, because you've just been promoted a couple straight times, but you're actually at least in touch with the bottom half of the league. What have you, you so you've played four games and now you're here. What have you experienced in these four games? I had already played through a full season um, before, but something corrupted with my file. And so I had lost an entire season. Oh, so that sucks. but in that season I got relegated out of there. So I had to redo it. And the starting the start of this season is the same as last. So, you know, I, I'm doomed to relegation uh, after getting into the playoffs the last three or last two seasons. Yeah, last two seasons because I've been up at least one for two seasons now. Oh wow, yeah. okay. So I see um you you've got the three straight promotions and then you got fourth, mm -hmm. fourth, and eighteenth. I couldn't get to the um the uh, automatic promotion spots, but I got to the playoffs and I lost in the first round of both. Because I know I know my team is they're not up to League One standards yet. This is interesting because I feel like what happened here is when you're getting promoted, and especially when you get promoted three straight times, there's a certain momentum. And when people talk mm -hmm. about that momentum, it's the team cohesion, it's the leadership support, and it's the atmosphere. And you've lost yeah. the atmosphere, obviously. And you've got uh, yeah. Uz, uh, this Usman Kamar. I don't know how important these players are to you exactly, but... Uh, Kamar was my starting left wing my entire time. You have basically of your own volition have kind of angered him and i understand what you're attempting to do you're trying to like raise yeah. money but unfortunately zero percent of your transfer revenue is made available now the good thing yeah is that you are managing at a level where loans and free transfers are enough to get you up to the championship oh so no scouting really hurts yeah is there, I, I've moved all of my scouting budget into my transfer budget pretty much and tried to move it to my wage budget. Yeah, which, I, is, which, which is smart. Yeah, that's it's all I can do to just try to stay up because last season we were supposed to be relegated and we didn't. I'm trying to guess what happened 
between those first two seasons and now. What do you think was the difference between your first two seasons and then the third season and now the fourth? The momentum died. It is exactly what you said before. The momentum died and that the wage budget hasn't caught up to where I am in terms of moving up so quickly. I haven't made many large signings in terms of like a transfer fee but I've made a lot of free signings, made a lot of loan-ins, and I, I think I've kept the squad pretty good. I've had to switch my formation. I was gonna, I was I was gonna ask about that. I was obviously yeah. looking at that earlier. Was this, this yeah. is not this the is, formation you were cooking with no. earlier, okay. No, I, I was playing a 4-2-3-1 with, mid, uh, with um, two midfielders, not defensive midfielders. I just kept that through the entire time. This tactic particularly that you've kind of switched to, why did you, why did you switch to this? I needed a defensive tactic to try to survive, is really what this is. Um, I, I don't know if the roles are jacked up on the save you sent me, but like, is your back line ball playing defender, ball playing defender, wide center back? No, no, I don't know why it's like that. So it took a second because you'd shifted things around a little bit, but this is yeah. the way that the tactic is supposed to generally yeah. look and play. I can feel your fear. Like we've got the be more disciplined, we've got the narrow. Right, you're focusing play down the wings, but your offense is more narrow. So this is just yeah. when you have the ball. So I, I don't think that, you know, if you're playing wing backs and focus the play down the wings and wingers that you want to be narrow offensively. Now, if you gotcha. are worried about, you know, you do have three center backs. So if you come in here and click trap inside and you funnel mm -hmm. players to the middle of the field, that's kind of what uh, you want. And then you, you could also trap outside if you're not, you know, if crosses aren't worrying you as much. Yeah, so I'm so I'm trying to have the opponents either play into my three center backs. I, I hear you. Personal preference, yeah. I would mm -hmm. probably break something out like this instead. I understand what you're saying, that like you're inviting them to come into here because they can't really get through. If, if, if you continue to have issues where they're able to get there and then mess with you, you have a center, one of your three center backs, which is what I was kind of looking for, that can play here. And then obviously, yeah. like, late in the game, you could drop your wing backs and drop your wings, and then all of a sudden you end up in, like, a nice 4-5-1 sort of formation that is very... Oh. This is super hard to score against. Okay, now, that being said, I did find another issue that I believe that your team has, which is oh. the fact that I found where all of your money is going. You have youth teams. Normally, if you were not in the lower leagues, I love youth teams. But no offense to Dwayne Cox, this guy's never really going to do anything. That's 16 players. I, I failed math in high school, so we got 15 times 16, which is 240,000. Do you want another Louis Berry on your team? Because the ability to pay for another Louis Berry is sitting in your U18. Okay. Also, this guy, you, you're probably looking at the star rating, thinking he's good. Actually, he, him I got um, for his versatility. He is, yeah. however, as much as he's a utility guy, your fifth highest paid player. This dynamic issue that you're having with Kamara just kind of ended immediately, right? There's nobody that seems interested in him. I, he's angry about his asking price. He thinks it's too high. I would just take it off. And he says he wouldn't react well to being offered out to other clubs. He really wants to stay. I would just take the asking price off and try and keep him happy. Like the, the issue for you, right, that you've diagnosed is that your atmosphere got a lot worse and you lost momentum. He is contributing to that in, uh, you know, half the way that it's, it's possible. If Patterson wants to move to a bigger club, then you just tell him that if a club offers for him, then he can leave, basically, and that's the way yeah. you have to handle that at this point. Is there anything else uh, that that has been lurking? Uh, well, I did look at the comparison on the squad planner, and my team is at the very bottom. It's tricky because the squad planner, like if you have a really good player or a really bad player, if somebody else has a really good player, it can really distort it in one direction or the other, especially because there can be a huge ability gap between teams in this league. But I, I, there's also the the old fashioned way. Let's just go to Mansfield and find their most important player. And it's Daniel Aguero who would be a superstar on your team, right? Love me some Daniel Aguero. You'll see like, okay, these are the types of players that I'm going to need to get in order to consistently be above them. I, I feel like I've said so many different things, and this has been a very interesting save to look at. But the main takeaway is that you need to get better players and you need to make sure your atmosphere yeah. is okay. Because the big difference, yeah. I think, between the team that finished fourth and the team that finished 18th was the atmosphere and the vibe around the team. I think so. Thank you. And All please right. go back to saving people's lives or whatever you're doing over there. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it, Z. Thank you good. so much for your time. And good luck at your save. Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for submitting your saves. And if you want to keep binge watching, here is me saving even more saves. It's an epidemic, really. So many football manager saves.
so little time.